Today I'm going to be changing the transmission fluid on a Toyota or Lexus with a sealed transmission. Now under the hood of my GS350, like any modern Toyota or Lexus vehicle, there's no transmission dipstick that you can check the transmission fluid or refill it if you need to change it. Toyota likes to call it lifetime fluid, but I like to call it lifetime business for Toyota when your transmission breaks down. So we won't be needing anything under the hood. Everything's actually accessed from underneath the vehicle. So the first thing you're going to want to do is jack the vehicle up in the front and the back to make sure it's level and put a lot of cardboard down because this could get messy. So here we are underneath the car. That's the driver's side wheel. This here is the transmission pan because this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. And this here is your exhaust pipe. This plastic cover here needs to be removed in order to access the transmission pan. To do that, there's two plastic 10 millimeter nuts here and four 10 millimeter bolts up at the front here. And then we can drop off this plastic pad. All right, so I'm gonna start by removing the 10 millimeter bolts in the front. All right, so we're gonna remove this 10 millimeter nut on this side here at the back. And then once that nut is removed, this pan can drop out. Meter bolts are removed, I can then remove the plastic cover. Expose the transmission pan. All right, so this here is the transmission pan. It's held on by 20 10 millimeter bolts. This here is the drain plug. It's a 14 millimeter drain plug to drain the fluid. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is drain the transmission fluid. I'm going to come with my 14 millimeter ratchet here and loosen up the drain plug. And then have a catch can underneath to drain the transmission fluid. And once most of the transmission fluid has been drained, I'm going to close up the drain plug. So now that all the fluid is drained, I'm going to take the old fluid and pour it into a container to measure it. Being careful not to lose any of the fluid because I want to get the exact measurement so I know how much to put back inside. One thing I noticed with this fluid is it's a very bright red color which means it's been changed before which is a good thing because if it was a brownish or a blackish color that could mean that the fluid's worn out or your tranny is on its way out. Over here on the left side of the transmission is a plastic cover that's held on by these two 10 millimeter bolts. Behind it there's a fill bolt that you remove and use a fluid pump to pump fluid into the transmission after you've drained it. So according to my measurement here two and a half quarts came out of the transmission so I'm going to be adding two and a half bottles of transmission fluid. So I'm going to be using a world standard Toyota Genuine fluid and I've got my siphon pump here that I'm going to use to pump it in. So how this pump works, you push it back and forth, you stick one side into your bottle then you stick the other side into the transmission. So now that the transmission fluid has been drained from the pan, I'm going to need to fill it. So I'm going to go over here to the passenger side and remove these two 10 millimeter bolts that hold this plastic cover on. One here and one over here. And then I can reach in and remove this plastic cover. Just pry it off the side of the tranny and pull it down. Alright, so I'm going to use a 24 millimeter socket with my half inch ratchet. Put it onto the fill bolt, it's a nice big bolt there, and break it free. <clears throat> okay, I got it free. Alright, so the bolt's removed. This is what the fill bolt looks like on the transmission. It's got a WS on it for WS fluid. Alright, so I'm going to stick the outlet side of my fluid pump into the fill port on the side of the transmission. And then I'm going to stick the inlet side of the pump into the transmission fluid bottle all the way down to the bottom. Alright, so now I'm going to pump the new fluid into the transmission. Alright, this quart is done. Make sure you drain all the fluid so you get your measurements right. Alright, so I've refilled the transmission with two and a half quarts of transmission fluid. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the fill plug on the side of the transmission here. Then I'm going to come in with my 24 millimeter socket and snug that WS bolt down. So next I'm going to install this cover. Just going to put that in there and then reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts on the side of the transmission. Snug this down. So instead of using a dipstick on the transmission, they actually use an overflow bolt that you pull out when the transmission is hot and the excess fluid drains. Now in my case it's really rusty and it's stripped out so I don't know how I'm going to get that out. So just quickly how the dipstick part works here, if this is your transmission pan and your fluid is sitting inside, as the temperature rises so does the level of the fluid because it expands and if it goes past the level of this straw here it'll actually flow through the straw and then out the overflow port. That's why it's very critical to have the correct temperature of the transmission fluid in order to measure the level properly. Alright so now that we've got enough fluid in the transmission we need to check the temperature to make sure it's at the right level so we're going to go under the OBD port and use a hookup wire like this to connect ports number 4 and 13. So the OBD port on the car is located underneath the driver's side dashboard just under here and you can see I've shorted the two terminals 4 and 13 on the OBD port. And now with the two wires shorted we're going to start the vehicle and you'll notice that it revs really high and there's a bunch of lights on the dashboard. 
In order to put the transmission into temperature indication mode, I'm going to shift from park to S and then go down to first gear and then all the way back up to sixth gear and then I'm going to go back over to P then I'm going to go back over to the D position and then go back and forth between neutral and drive for at least six seconds. I'm going to go back into P and now I'm going to reach down and remove the wire from the OBD port and you'll notice that everything will stop flashing and once the fluid temperature has reached 104 degrees Fahrenheit you can see that the D indicator and the park indicator will remain lit and you can leave the vehicle on and go underneath and check the level of the fluid. You can also pull up the fluid temperature from any advanced scanner or Toyota's own TechStream software. Just head over to the ECT menu and go on to data list and then you'll find the AT oil temperature here. Currently it's sitting at 129 degrees Fahrenheit because I've been idling for a couple of minutes. So now we're going to come under the vehicle. Make sure you don't touch these exhausts because they could be really hot and loosen this 5 millimeter hex plug and let any excess fluid drain out. Now in my case it's a little bit rusty so I'm going to skip that part. So after you've verified that there's no leaks, I'm going to go ahead and replace the plastic under panel that goes below the transmission pad and the 6 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. Finally, I'm going to take the vehicle for a test drive and make sure the transmission shifts smoothly through all its gears.